you know, we all basically know the story of King Saul, King David. And uh, I want you to come to a realization that most Christians, we act like Saul, all right, not like David. David is a rare, you know, type of person. And uh, we're going to talk about Amos today. And in the book of Amos, God also says that, you know, he's talking about judgment, right? Amos talks about the judgment that's coming to his people. Um, a lot of times, a lot of churches like to talk a lot about grace and whatnot, you know, but whatever season we're in, we have to speak whatever God wants to speak to us about. And we also have to come to know uh, the different uh, sides of God, right? Uh, everybody kind of, you know, we can, uh, we can jump on God's grace and love, and we know about that, and, and we still need to learn a deeper level on those, uh, on His love and grace and mercy. But at the same time, you also have to know that God is a God of judgment, God of righteousness, God of justice. And you cannot shy away from that because, it, you know, it might scare you. You should actually uh, study a lot of that so that you can remind yourself, um, you know, that God is a God of justice and he, he will judge. Amen? And so in the book of Amos, he's going to judge. He said, I'm going to judge Israel, but within the, when, when I'm going to shake the Israel, which is in the nation, right, in the nation. And so... <clears throat> He's going to shake the whole nation, right? And, and the whole nation of Israel is going to get shaken. And within that nation, he said, there is a remnant, though, that's not going to f completely fall, right? So he is always looking to save a particular group, his remnant. And um, people like King David, is, is not, they're not numerous out there, right? We're, we're, like I said, we're more or less like King Saul. Now, you may start out like King Saul. You may start out um, like uh, even Jacob, right? Grabbing on Esau's heel and, and trying to manipulate things. But uh, it's how we finish the race that's really going to count. All right? We can all start well. We can all, uh, and we can all start uh, with a bad uh, history bad past, but regardless, can you finish well? Amen? You know, the Lord reminds us, you know, I have anointed you. That's for all of us. I have anointed you. Do well. Hmm? We all know deep inside your spirit, your heart, you know what's right and wrong. And, and, and it's, you, you know, God is watching us to see how you choose. You're never, you know, uh, we're going to talk about almost uh, and uh, the basically, I'll give you the scripture, almost uh, ch chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. I'm just going to read it real quick. <clears throat> Surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret plan of the judgment. Okay? His secret plan of judgment. Judgment has two folds. We'll get to that in the second half. His secret plan of the judgment to come to his servants, the prophets. So the Lord does nothing without revealing his secret plan of the judgment to come to his servants, the prophets. Uh, so basically, nothing's gonna, nothing should be a surprise to you. All right, God's going to warn us. And he's going to warn us numerous times of what's going to happen to us, uh, whether it's a blessing or uh, it's going to be a judgment. And you can't say, you're not going to face God and say, I didn't know. Right? You, you're not going to be able to say that. Now, God's going to, uh, for, for some of us, uh, we're we going to have received a lot of chances, a lot of graces, a lot of grace and mercy. And it's going to show at the, uh, on the judgment seat that it was the per people that have rejected God. And... As we, you know, the Bible is given to us to, so that we can learn, right? The examples of the old happen so that you, for our generation, to learn. And so more will be required from us. There's more accountability on our part, more responsibility. It will be more judgment on us because we know. We have the Bible in the phone. You have, uh, 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 you know, computers. 
you can drive, listen to the Bible. You can, you, you know, they didn't have that. They couldn't even read back then, most of them. You can read. And if you, can, if you have the ability to read and, and you use that ability to go do something with the world, how, how are we going to face God, right? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. I want us to, uh, uh, you know, when we preach about uh, go back to basics, right? It's not a bad thing, all right? And it's not, you shouldn't feel like, you know, don't let your pride interfere with your thinking like, oh, basics? I'm like, I'm too smart for that. I know the Bible. I read it so many times. I've been a Christian for so long. Uh, you know, I know more than you. I've been to this school, the theology school, what school, whatever school. I had this spiritual experience. I met God, in fact. You, you know, you can come with all that. And then you can have pride right next to you. I just say those stuff, and it will mean nothing still. Okay, it doesn't mean nothing. Someone who comes with all that ammunition, if, you, if you're a person who comes with that kind of ammunition, you need to examine yourself, all right? Because if you're a person confidently walking with God, you don't need to prove nothing to anybody, nothing. I don't need to prove nothing to you with my words. What I, I don't need to tell you my history and to, to try to prove something to you. I am as he is. Okay? If I'm, if I'm there already, my actions, my fruit determines who I am. Not my trying to, sh sh uh, trying to give you a picture or an image of me. And even if you have gone through more, you should tremble more, actually, because you're responsible now for more. And you should be somewhere if you have experienced all that, right? You should be somewhere then, spiritually. But if you're, like, heading downwards or on the tail end, you better wake up. Because God was giving you those experiences to get you out of there, not stay in there, not stay at the bottom or the tail end. And so we got to come to a, a realization what if I'm acting like Saul most of the time, and that's why I'm not getting nowhere? You see, simple instruction is given to Saul through Samuel. Samuel represents the authority. Hmm? And now on a church, picture of a church, I can represent Samuel, who is the authority who brings the instruction to Saul, who also represents another authority, hmm? or whether it's uh, uh, Saul or any, any, any other person, and it's, it, you determine how you're going to respond and how you're going to be. And here in 1 Samuel 15, verse, thir verse 3, uh, simple instruction, very simple. Right? God is like, it's my time. I'm going to take out a, a, a Malachite nation, <clears throat> and I have appointed you, Saul, to do my work. I've, give, I've given you authority, I've given you power, I give you people, I give you money, take care of my business. Go, verse 3, go, completely destroy that Amalekite nation, everybody. Men, women, children, baby, cattle, sheep, ghosts, camel, donkeys, everything that is breathing, destroy it. So he gets an instruction. It's, this is very simple instruction, right? All he has to do is follow the instruction, and then he's good, right? But you see, the problem with Saul and most of us is that we always want to add something, right? We want to, we want to add because we want to get a little credit. We want to take away because we want to get a little credit, too. I want you to look at yourselves when instruction is given to you, whether from me, whether from your boss at work, whether from maybe even your spouse uh, uh, or any other authority in your life. If they give you an instruction, how do you respond and how do you feel inside, right? Most of us, 
on the inside, you don't want to respond. You don't want to do exactly what they're telling you because you're thinking, why should I listen to you? Because, hmm? you know, we just naturally want to be the boss. Right? We just naturally want to be the boss. <clears throat> and we don't want to listen to anyone, especially if we feel that uh, they're uh, of a lower authority or if uh, they've offended you. Right? You don't want to respond to someone who has offended you because you don't want them to look good. You don't want to get th th them get any credit. But God's going to use such people to test your humility. Because it's not going to be about right or wrong. God's going to see whether you are humbled or not. You see, we're too busy always trying to discern, is this right or wrong? Maybe that's not your job. Maybe you need to get reach a point of humility first before you're allowed and given authority to determine right and wrong. Right? Because it, to determine right or wrong is to be a judge. And to get to a judge level is a high level. Right? Even in this world, you want to be a judge. It's not that simple. Right? You got to study a lot, and you got to, in most cases, you got to be appointed. You know, appointed or elected, depending on where you're at. It's not like, hey, I want to become a judge, and you, and you apply for the judge. In most cases, you're appointed by the, uh, on the federal level, the president appoints you. I appoint you judge, right? So, in our, and even in the, uh, God appoints us. And if he's going to give you that type of uh, authority to judge the nations, hmm, then you can, you have, <clears throat> God's going to give you that ability to determine right and wrong and, and as you are led by the Holy Spirit to, to uh, give verdicts and answers. So for most of us, uh, uh, it's not your job right now, okay, to know right or wrong. Your job right now is to, like, like if, you, if you join the army and go through boot camp, they're just trying to teach you obtain stamina, hmm? learn basics, learn how to march, learn how to follow orders, learn how to run, learn how to carry heavy gear, hmm? learn how to eat, learn when to sleep. When we tell you when to sleep, you sleep. When we tell you to wake up, you wake up. You join the army, your life don't belong to you no more. So as we are in God's army, our he said, I bought you. I bought you with my blood, my life. I redeemed you. You belong to me now. So that means we're under God's authority, and, and he's the, he has sovereignty over us, which means uh, he gets to rule over us, right? But he wants to rule out of love, not out of oppression or, or fear. And he wants us to love him back voluntarily out of, you know, out of free will. But he doesn't want the rough edges around your heart. The rough edges makes us to add and take away. Hmm? So in the army, if they tell you, march three miles, that's all you got to do. It's very simple. March three miles. Right? But we go, you know what? I'm, I want to show the sergeants I'm, 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 I'm really good. And I'm going to mar march four miles. You know what they're going to say? I told you to march three miles. I didn't tell you to march four miles. You're lost now. Where are you? I don't know, but I marched four miles. See, that's how they justify themselves. I marched four miles. I don't care. You're lost. You're making me spend time, energy to look for you now. If you just stick to the simple, basic instruction, everybody's happy. Hmm? You know, it's, it's our own desire, right? So simple instruction. Go completely destroy the Amalekite nation, King Saul. Very simple. Nothing complicated. I'm going to give you the victory. I gi I'll give you 200,000 soldiers from Israel, 10,000 men from Judah, right? Verse 4. I got, I'm going to give you victory. Go, King Saul. So he goes and has a war with them. And then uh, what does he do? Uh, you know, uh, Verse 9, he captures the king's, uh, the king, uh, Agag, spares him, and, and then he keeps the best, verse 9 here, he keeps the best of the sheep, goats, and cattle, the fat calves, and the lambs, everything, in fact, that appealed to them. Everything, in his eyes, what he defined as, this is good. But the inner 
inner motive, right, is about himself. I want the people to look up to me. I want the people to respect me. I want the people to know that it is I who let them have all these nice looking animals so they can and will we'll twist it and say, hey, well, let's give this to God, right? It's not even their own money. Someone else's money. They're going to give it to God and go, oh, yeah, we're giving to God. It's not, they haven't sacrificed nothing of their own. This, they stole, the, God gives it to them, but God wants it burnt up, right? And so they take it and give it back to God. Uh, they destroyed only what is worthless or of poor quality. You know, we're like that. We want the best for ourselves. Okay, you ever, you ever watch your spending habits? When it comes to yourself, and this is most people, right? I'm not saying that all of it, because there's some other people who, who will buy the worst for themselves and still buy the worst for other people, right? But then there's people who, who, who will, you know, want the best for themselves, even if it's going to, uh, uh, even though they can't afford it. So uh, uh, in here, though, he, he's given instruction, uh, and his posture... His position is not, I need to obey God, right? I need to do right. I need to obey God. I want to please God. See, that's not his posture. When Samuel comes to give him a, a instruction, it's not like, okay, I'm, I'm going to please God. I'm going to follow that instruction. I'm going to do right, and, and I'm gonna, I just want to do right, right? That's not his posture. His posture is, okay, I'm going to go, but um, let's see what, uh, what I can get, get something from it for myself. And <clears throat> in verse 13, Samuel finally found him. Saul greeted him. Saul's all happy, right? He's like, oh, I did a good job. Right? He's all happy, too, because he, you know, he, he's got the king. He's looking good. People are cheering him. May the Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's command. Then what's all this bleeding of sheep and goats? And of the lowing cattle I hear. It's true. 15. It's true. It's true. He spared the, he's confessing out of his own mouth. Uh, but uh, we're going to give it to God. Don't worry about it. Right? You know, if I give you a very simple instruction... It's for you, not for me, but for you, right? Say, uh, if I give you a simple answer, hey, go buy some uh, 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 milk for yourself because maybe you want, you know, maybe you need some milk, let's say, spiritual milk. Go buy yourself 2% milk. I give you very simple instructions. You go to the store and you come back and you bring 2% chocolate milk. I said, uh, you know the context, don't you? 2% milk. I didn't say chocolate milk or strawberry milk. I said milk, 2% for you. Why you change it? I like chocolate. You see that? You, you change the initial simple instruction because you, when, when you're sent, you go after what you want. Instead of going after the one, going after what pleases the person that sent you, hmm? which is God, right? If, and, but God's trying, it's for your own good. Maybe, you know, just for argument's sake, right? Maybe you need some calcium, right? And you need to grow some. So God's like, I'm going to give you some milk. Go get some 2% milk. Come back and go, chocolate milk. Oh, yeah. Thank you, God. See, but the chocolate is not going to, it's going to add, it, it mixes, right? It's going to add the extra sugar, it's going to add the extra calories, and it's the, the, the content and the purpose and the objective or the initial instruction is distorted. And then you, you can still come to me and say, but I did follow your instruction, 2% milk. But I told you, but I told you, I didn't tell you to get chocolate, but I got, but I got 2%, right? See, and we can argue back and forth. 
Well, I, I, no, 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 no. I told you to get 2% milk. I did. See, people choose to delude themselves. It's amazing sometimes. You know my context, right? I'm, this still happens, okay? Someone got chocolate milk, maybe. Not funny? <laughs> but, you know, you know, understand my point, right? Uh, um, you have to uh, choose to position yourself that if you're giving instruction, God is watching you to see how you will follow that instruction. It's not a matter of right or wrong sometimes. It's not a matter of what you want or what, uh, uh, you know, what I may want. You, oh, you know what? The pastor told me to get 2%, but I think he'll really like strawberry. He just don't know that yet. So I'll get him strawberry chocolate milk. And then if you bring me strawberry chocolate milk, I'm going to say, I, I, I didn't tell you to bring me strawberry chocolate milk. I told you to bring me 2% milk, right? I'm going to send somebody else. I'm going to send somebody who can follow my instruction. Samuel said, uh, uh, let me find it here. 20, verse 26. Samuel replied, I will not go back with you. Now, you know, he's all worried about his uh, reputation with the people. Even if you get disciplined by God, are you more concerned about your own, what you just did, or are you concerned what the people think about you? You see that? That's the trap, too. He's not thinking about, you know, he's like, okay, I, 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 I guess I did something wrong, but he's more concerned about how the people are looking at him. And that could happen here. You know, you get disciplined, you, you're in an embarrassing situation, and you might like, oh, what are the other people thinking about me? Rather than looking at yourself, what you just did, offending God. Since you have rejected the Lord's command, he has rejected you as king of Israel. Now, this is huge over here in this context, right? But for us, uh, you know, you're going to get a lot of warnings, and you're going to get probably a lot of chances because I've seen God, uh, even with our own church members, give us a lot of chances. Thank you, Jesus. Right? But there will come a time when almost kicks in. Right? And God's like, I'm not relenting no more. My judgment will come. Now, to, to be rejected as king of Israel, now for Saul, this was a big deal. But for us, to, you know, when, when we get rejected, uh, uh, you, might get, you might lose uh, a position. You might lose um, uh, some blessings. You might lose, uh, you know, some uh, power anointing, whatever good things that may God had intended for you. And now you got to wait. You got to wait and, and be sent back to the bottom or the wilderness and hopefully, uh, you know, you, you, get, you become humbled and, and really know that you have sinned and truly repent. And then you come back and you'll be fine. So that's all. It's very simple there, too. It's very simple. But when God gives you a word, you have to take it very seriously. And so maybe this is your last chance. And I've preached that many times. I'm not saying it is, but you should take it like that, right? Oh, this is my last chance. For all of us, this is your last chance in, in, a, in, a, in a general sense. Where are you going to go, right? I mean, we've been to many churches. We've been to many churches, and uh, we made a lot of mistakes already. This is it. There's nowhere to go anymore. You fall away here, where are you going? You're going south. You're going down. That's where you're going. You have to choose, right, to uh, uh, make it. That's the bottom line. How do you make it, right? I mean, whatever God does to you, see, we first have to recognize his sovereignty. What does that mean? 
That means that he's the king, and he can do whatever he wants. If he blesses you, we're so, we're very, you know, we don't have a problem with that. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. When, so when he spanks you, like, hmm, that hurt God. No, you have to thank you, God. Because you, as the Bible says, that you're loving me, actually. When you spank me, you're loving me. Wow, thank you, God. Hmm? You know, you, you, you get an attitude, I don't care anymore. You're rejecting God. And that's going to get stronger and stronger. And you're going to just go back to uh, uh, sin. And then what, what are you going to happen when it's too late? You, you, know, you know how many millions and millions of people are in hell regretting? It's too late. We don't need to get there. We don't need to go there, right? This is the time of grace. Right now, and I've preached that many times to you, this is your time. God even told me that on Thursday night for myself. He said, use, because, you know, I preached that to you. He also said it to me. Use this time of grace to fix yourself. So when you make mistakes, he's giving you grace so you can change, see your mistakes, and fix yourself. He's not letting you say, that's okay, just keep on doing what you're doing wrong, and I'm not going to hurt you or judge you or, or punish you. He's not saying that. But in almost, that's how they were thinking. Oh, not, nothing's going to happen to us. You know, in the book of Amos, the time, the, the, they're living in one of the most prosperous times, the, the northern kingdom of Israel. <laughs> We are living in one of the most prosperous times in history. And if you look at the pattern of the Bible, during prosperous times for God's people, we just mess up. Right? We do stupid things. I hear people, you know, I, I, you know, I, I it's like preaching, you know, my friend that came over a couple weeks ago. Uh, talk a little bit about church. He's like, you know, uh, we just don't got time for church. I know we're having service Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, no, no, we just, we just don't have time. He doesn't even work right now. He tells me he don't have no time. But you see, that's our attitude uh, out there. I don't have no time. I don't have, I'm, I'm working too much. I got commute. I got family. I got Kung Fu lesson, because he takes his daughter to Kung Fu. I got Kung Fu lessons to take my daughter, or whatever lessons I got to take her. My wife wants to do that. I want to do that. I got no time to, for all this church. You know, I was thinking about that this morning. How many Christians have you ever heard? I don't have time for the world. I'm too busy with God. I don't have time for that nonsense the world, God. I'm too busy with God. Maybe that's normal. Hmm? Instead of saying I'm too busy with work, too busy with uh, uh, my family uh, uh, time, too busy with my habits, too busy with my golf, my football on Sundays. You know, you know when he came to dinner uh, that one Sunday, we said, uh, I don't watch sports. Oh, that's a deal breaker. She tells me, that's a deal breaker. Oh, I don't know. Now I don't know if I can come to your church. You don't watch sports. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I'm not the one without a job, right? I'm not the one who's broke. <laughs> I'm not the one with problems. You should be coming to me, right? I'm, I'm not going to your way, right? Your way is not working, friend. You you telling me you're 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 enjoying all this, but yet there's problems in your life, and you want me to head your way? No, 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 no. You got to come my way, amen. You see, so maybe maybe that's normal, huh? Oh, sorry, I I, I you know what I I got you know so you know sometimes your friends might say, hey, let's go out. You're like, no, no, I, I'm spending time with my wife or my husband, right? They understand that. But if you say, oh, no, 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 I'm spending time with God. What? You cult. You pray too much. You spend God, time too much with God. You're cult. Right? 
No, who's the cult? Right? Maybe the people who don't spend time with God is the cult, right? See, that's the test. That's why the world's right there next to us. God wants to know where you want to go. You want to go to the world or you want to go with him? Because, you know, in heaven, we, there is everything up there. You can go fishing. I hear our mansions. I don't know about your house, but my mansion. All right? I hear the mansions you, that we can get. One floor is like a theme park. Right? You didn't get to go to Disneyland in this life? Well, guess what? You got a whole floor when you go home. Can't, can't you just let it go in this life and say, Lord, I'm going to wait. I'm going to do your work. And he's like, I'm going to reward you. No eyes have seen, no ears have heard what I have for you. Whole floor is like you got a notion. You like fishing? Go open the door, go on your boat and go fishing. Hmm? All by yourself or, to, you know, the, get the people who don't got a house up there. Who, want, who brought chocolate milk instead? <laughs> they don't have a house. I like got a whole floor of uh, jungles. And if you like animals, God will give you all the animals too. All right? You never went to Africa or uh, all those other countries and you never got to see animals? Well, you know what? You got a floor that is a jungle and it doesn't wither or die. It sustains and it's beautiful amen you know as i was driving um you know uh, deacon sarah put up those scriptures on on yesterday on the band about oh, from psalms all that has breath praise the lord uh you know let the mountains praise him let the trees praise him you know as as uh in the, yesterday i said that my wife and i was talking we say things look more crisp you know, life is becoming, look, it looks crisp. So when I'm driving, because, you know, we have to go through little hills on 84, and I look at even the windmills, right, off of 580, where I come from, where I live, there's huge windmills. And as they're turning these mountains, what's in my mind is like, well, they're, they're praising God. Because hmm? everything is alive, you know, they're praising God. The creation is praising God. And so King, the Psalms, psalmists concede this. They can write about it. And for most of us, we don't understand it because our, there's veils in our faces, right? We, we can't see clearly. What are you talking about, psalmists? What do you mean the trees are praising God? I don't see it. But when, when the veil is removed and you become more like God... You know, they say when you go to heaven, the colors are like really standing out, right? Like, whoa, whoa, look at this blue, wow, right? It really stands out. That's, that can happen here, I believe, because when your eyes, your spiritual eyes are opening and you see the spiritual world, how it's supposed to be, it becomes crisp. And you see that purity and creation, now all of your being wants to just praise God. Wow, praise God, you know? That's what's in my spirit as I'm driving. <laughs> but when you're, when, you're in, you know, when you're still very fleshy in this world, all you're looking at is a person who's driving too slow in front of you. <clears throat> move it, move it! Hmm? Oh, I got oh, it, hurry up. Hmm? You're just thinking about fleshly things. Or, you, you know, oh, that pastor about me probably right just thinking about nonsense instead of wow this is look at this creation see your is, is the minds where's your mind spiritual things or carnal things but it's not just a choice you got to get to that stage where your sin a lot of that sin is removed and you're flowing with god amen you got to be flowing with god and then you can now see him in all of creation. And when the Bible says, let the glory of God fill the earth. Now you see that. Whoa, it does fill the earth. Right? You're starting to see it. You don't see the bad stuff. You see the good stuff. You, you see, we need to get there. Then now you can praise and worship him with a pure heart. 
rather than, you know, oh, do I, do I look okay, you know? Or why is that person wearing that? Oh, how come they look, what's up with their hairstyle? How come they dressing like me? You know, nonsense, right? You know, we got, you know, this takes time, though. It doesn't come overnight. But simple, basic instructions, you got to get through boot camp to get to the higher levels. If you can't follow simple, basic instruction, you're going to get thrown back in boot camp. Everybody else is going to go fight. We're going to get the more advanced weapons, you know, the gifts of God. We're going to get more advanced, you know, clothes and, and all the perks for being an advanced team. And the, and, the, and, the, and the ones who don't obey, they're going to go back to boot camp until they learn basic, simple, learn how to obey. Basic, simple instruction. If I tell you to march three miles, just give me three miles, please. Do not give me four. Do not give me two. Do three. That's all God wants. Simple. Don't add. That's what the Bible Don't add. Don't take away. Don't go to the right. Don't go to the left. Just simple. Yeah, just keep it simple. And then you'll see how far you'll go if you keep it simple. You know why we don't keep it simple? Because you're looking for a shortcut. You want a shortcut so you can, how do I get to 20, how do I run 20 miles? When they say just three, three miles, no, I'm going to do 20 miles. How do I do it? Oh, I'm going to find the shortcut. You're lost now. You went to the swamp. Come out all dirty and smelly now. Hmm? I'm running out of time. All right, let's give the Lord a hand. Thank you, God. All right, worship team, come on up.